Hello everyone. Welcome back to Streaming Alchemy. I'm Oh, sorry about that. We've been having some technical issues here as we're trying to get things out. So we're, I apologize for being a little late, but I'm John Mahoney. And on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at ways to automate some of the complex data overlays you may need. Everything from lower thirds with little sort of widgets and other things you need to appear uh, on and off the screen for a full uh, production framework. And this will include things like making sure that the right lower thirds are displayed for different screen layouts and things of that sort. So anyway, before we get started, uh, I do want to invite everyone, uh, if you have any questions, just post them in the comments and we'll get to them here on the show. Also, if you'd like to call in, somebody from the studio can get you on air. So just go to the link below or in the show notes and we should be uh, good to have you on air. And speaking of having somebody on air, I believe we have somebody waiting in the queue to talk. So, Bill, hello. Hello there, how are you? Very good, how are you? I'm in great form, I'm looking forward to another great show. Oh, thank you, so I appreciate you calling in. So did you have a specific question or? Just wanted to. No, I was looking to talk generally about a um, uh, uh, big thanks to you and your team, but also um, specifically looking at the, any comments that might come up this time round. And also, uh, I, I'm a one man man. I'm one of the top global privacy activists in the world. I took on Facebook at the European High Court and we challenged them, but we had to crowdfund all expenses, so we don't have a production crew. So we're looking at sort of cobbling together stuff to, to, to be effective. Um, and whilst we're some of the, the, the most active uh, people in the world in terms of fighting for privacy, we have such low costs that we what we do, and we really appreciate a lot of the, the tips and hints that we pick up from you guys. Oh, well, thank you. And I mean, I think this is, this is clearly an issue that needs a lot of attention. It was in fact something we were just talking about here with sort of identity and how to, you know, sort of take control of your own identity and make sure you have secure ways to leverage it. So uh, I definitely appreciate the work you're doing, Bill. And uh, you know. well, I was I was on the BBC today twice talking about the being interviewed about the Elon Musk Twitter um, uh, debacle, which was really interesting. And um, obviously they were asking about the uh, sort of uh, content moderation and uh, privacy implications of all of that. And uh, here in Europe, with GDPR, we're way ahead of the states that doesn't even have a federal privacy regulation yet. Um, so I do a lot of broadcast media. Um, but um, we're looking to sort of ramp up some of the evangelism we're doing. And we're really grateful for you and the team for providing us with tips and hints. Um, as I say, we're, we're, we're taking on the likes of Facebook. They've got very deep pockets and an unlimited budget. And, and we're a, a group of uh, uh, well-meaning activists. Um, we have to crowdfund our expenses and we work for free. So I have to do some extra work on the side just to pay the bills. So any tips and hints we get from you guys and sort of cobbling tools together, making uh, our budget go further and, and helping us in our, uh, how effective we are as evangelists for privacy and digital ethics is gratefully received. And we, we tune in every week and we, you probably hear our comments and we're great fans. Well, I, I definitely appreciate that. And I def definitely appreciate you, you know, going from the BBC to the streaming alchemy show. That's, that's, that's a big step down in terms of, uh, prestige, but we are certainly honored to have you here. So thank you, Bill. I really appreciate it. Nice to see you guys. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Take care. Bye. All right. So let's, uh, before we jump in, so that was great to, to hear from Bill. Uh, and privacy clearly is something that uh, I think all of us deal with, both as producers, as well as consumers of media. So. Uh, definitely interesting. So let's see. So we have uh, a number of people who have sort of jumped into the, the comments over here. So let me, 
let me just see. We have uh, uh, automation for vMix. Sweden is waiting. Thank you. I appreciate you. I know you've been on for quite a while now, so thank you for hanging out for this. Uh, Rudy is here. Rudy, it's always a pleasure to see you. It's, it's great to have you here. So we have Biz Shorty. Uh, so thank you, Biz. Uh, glad you made it in time. I know this has been, uh, you know, catch as catch can for you. So uh, we definitely appreciate it. Uh, Bill, you know, that, thank you for, for joining us here. Definitely appreciate it, that Bill. Uh, and JP is here. So JP, hello. So looking forward to having you here as well. So thank you. We have uh, Dennis Van Dalen, uh, ready for the show from the Netherlands. Uh, so Dennis, thank you. Happy to have you here. America Newscape is here. America, thank you for joining us. Always great. Uh, we have John Simon here. So John, thank you. Great to have you here again. Uh, so we have uh, ISTV Live. He's saying, hi, sir, from uh, India, I believe. So hello, how are you? Nice to have you here. So uh, American Newscape was asking if that was a, a paid promotion. It, it was not. Bill's actually been following the show for quite a while, and he's been uh, you know, back and forth with, with us sort of offline from the show about some of the code that we posted. And I think, you know, Bill just wanted to sort of introduce himself to everybody. And, uh, you know, clearly, you know, I think what he's doing is, uh, is, is a worthwhile cause. But uh, that is, there was no uh, promotional side, paid or unpaid, uh, aligned with that. So, but thank you for asking. I think that's important. You know, we're very clear about those types of things. So we have... Hakan uh, Frost from Stockholm, Sweden. Hakan, thank you for joining us. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to look at how to do automation around more complex overlays. And, and probably, you know, the best place to start would give a little context. I have a, a vMix preset here that's set up with a host and four calling guests. So this would, you know, they're not actual calling guests. We just have them here as video. And what we're going to have is a way where you can have either a host on air, uh, on screen, full screen. You can have a guest on screen, full screen, or you can have a two box with one of the guests and the host. Uh, we will also have overlays for that. We'll have a, an overlay which shows uh, their name and title. We'll have a little pop-up overlay in the upper right-hand corner of the screen that will show the location of the guest. And then we'll have a little uh, overlay on the bottom of the screen that will show their Instagram and Twitter handles. If this would, that type of program would, you'd want to do that. So I think the best way to do this is let me actually just show you the output from vMix and I'll sort of walk through uh, what we have here. So if you just give me one second here, I left something off that I need to turn on. Okay. So what I have here is the host and this would be the full shot of the host. I have the ability to sort of call up a lower third for the host name. And in this case, this is a fabricated show called Through the Lens. Uh, and so that gives me sort of a start point. I can also, ha I have multiple guests that I can put on. So we have, uh, let me go and select one of the guests here. So I have guest one. Uh, two, three, and four. So those are my four guests. For these guests, I can actually just call up the lower third. And just by selecting different guests, you can see the lower third is changing. So we'll, we'll go through how we do that. The other thing you'll notice here is that inside of this box, inside of Emix, we're actually doing a dynamic uh, change with a cube roll. And I, I want to talk a little bit about how we were able to do that. The other thing we can do, though, is we can also switch to a two box. So if I go and say I want to see the two box here, you will now notice that I went to the two box, but I also changed the overlay that was associated with this two box. The other thing I have is I have other elements here. So 
if I come around and say, Amy, she's coming to us live from San Francisco, and I could turn on her social media uh, contacts or take those off or take the city off and also just take the lower third off and let it go. So this is basically what we've done. And we've done this really so you can get it down to sort of just a set of single button pushes. Which guests do I want? And then do I want the host, the guest, or the two box? And everything else then is just a question of what do I want to show on the screen for my overlays. So to get started with that, why don't we jump into the vMix side of this and I'll talk a little bit about how we put all of this together. So it, the first thing we have in here is that we set up things in Data Source Manager. So I'll just sort of pull this in. And so I basically have a CSV file with the names for all the guests and the other detail information. So uh, we start with, you know, the first guest uh, is in slot one and the host, who's Frank Carlton, he is in slot five. So we just, the host, anytime you see the host, it's always going directly to slot five, to sort of row five. And otherwise, if we're going to one of the guests, we're actually pulling the data off of here by going to the appropriate row for that guest and saying, that's the active row. So that's how we're pulling in the data associated with the different uh, guests that we have on the show. And if I actually switch over to my other desktop here, uh, where I have the uh, Visual Studio open, you can see this is the text file that we're using. It's the CSV file, very simple. Each field is there with commas separating them. So I could just go and edit this and it would change automatically. All right, I, I, I'm told the technical gremlins are still with us. So uh, this is something that uh, we're away from the studio for a week and suddenly uh, we, we, end up, we end up with issues. So this will be stuff we'll have to, to dig into and I apologize for that. But we have the CSV file sitting over here and very easy, we could make any changes and that would be reflected right away in the data source. So. This is something we we sort of covered last week when we were going through the news and how that all works, except we use JSON, but the same basic model for working with this. So the next thing though, uh, is that the way we handle the titles, let me go back to the vMix screen, because I think this is this is probably more interesting, is that what we did is we put the lower third for, so let me sort of click over here, this is the lower third for the host, that's the lower third for the guest. This is the two box lower third. And then we have, uh, so, so this over here is the little bumper up top for their location. And this is the little bumper at the bottom for their social media. So the way we handle this is that we pull all of this information together and put it into a single input layered into this input. Uh, and the model here means that I can have multiple title templates, but because I stack them as layers, I can now take and use those and turn them on and off based on what I need to see on screen at a given time. The other piece to this is that down here, you'll see we have something called the proper title. What the proper title is actually is uh, it's a mix. And one of the things in the new vMix 26, it's a beta we're running here. Uh, so one of the things in vMix 26 is you have a lot more mixes to work with. And uh, you also can hide the sort of switchability of the mix and just say, I really just want to see it as a single input. But what we're doing here now is based on uh, what we have on screen, 
So is it the host? Is it the guest? Uh, is it the two box? I can actually take and push that into this mix layer. So I have something that's sitting there saying, you know, based on what's, what's being displayed on screen, select this value, this input, as the one that's live, cut to that in this mix, and that's part of my stack that I have in my complex overlay where I have all of these things stacked up. So this means now that in addition to having control of the individual elements, by doing this mix uh, to determine which one of the lower thirds do I have active, I now can change that dynamically very well. So not just hide, hide it or show it, but also easily change it and even change it with some type of you know, like fade in or other thing, which you couldn't do if you just uh, were doing a hide or a show on a layer. So a lot of capability in this model for doing that. Uh, so the other thing that we have here is that when we have an active guest, we can pick which one of these guests is active. And likewise, we're using another mix here to say, this is the active guest mix. And when I select one of the guests on my stream deck with just the button push, it puts that guest input into that active mix. That's just cutting in that mix. And then when I do my two box over here, what I'm actually doing, so if you, you look here, the layers that I have in here are this active guest, input 13, that's the guest that you have, but that's a mix output. So you're getting the mix coming into there and I'm swapping what goes in the mix. So it's very easy to change things dynamically now. So now you can see what we're doing is a combination of using layers with multiple titles and using mixes for specific elements that we need to dynamically adjust. All right, we're back. As you can see, I have a new mic here. Uh, we are just having all sorts of audio issues and we're having technical issues with our computer. So just stuff that we're gonna have to take care of, but uh, so sorry for the interruption there. But so what we basically covered here and hopefully the, the audio was okay. Uh, now we got the, the mic. Uh, what we basically done now is set things up so that we have mixes and layers to manage these things in a more dynamic fashion. So let's talk a little bit about the specific things that we have with the different mixes and layers here. So we, we have the active guest layer, which I mentioned, and we have the proper title layer. So this is, uh, this is something that uh, you know, we covered with how we feed them in. So all of these things, uh, the active guest layer is being uh, basically set through a dynamic script. So let me actually jump in and show you what that script looks like. Uh, let me see, I could probably do it from over here. Let me see if I got this here. Yeah, so here, I'll, I'll just do it, do it over on the uh, other screen here. So what I'm basically doing is, I'm basically doing an API function call that says, I want you 
for the proper title to just come and say, select the input with the right title. So, you know, in our uh, vMix preset, we have the main titles in uh, five, six, and seven. So the host, uh, the guest, and then the multi box. And so we're actually just saying, when I want to move to one of these, I will just select the mix I want to do it on and the input I want it to go to. And this is the code that's doing it. But the way we're doing this is we're doing it using triggers on an input. So if I come here and say, if I go and I select my two box, so let's switch back to the preset screen here. If I select my two box over here and I go to triggers, you can see that I have on this uh, transition in, which means when this loads up, I want to do a script and it's basically this function call over here, which is saying take input seven for mix one and put that in. So now everything, when I go to the two box, it actually takes and loads that into the proper lower third. When I go to uh, the host, it'll do the same thing. Now it's, it's changing, it's then we input five, which is for the host, but now it's pulling that and putting that into our uh, proper lower third. So everything based on what I select is going to have the, the proper lower third title placed into this input. And then in the complex overlay, so if I sort of turn all these things on, based on what I select, so if I come back and say, I'm actually gonna go and do one of the guests full screen, you can see now that this has changed over here, and now I am actually seeing just the, the lower third for the guest, and I still have all of these elements up here. So if you come here, this is the composited overlay, but you know, I can turn any of these things off. And then if I switched over and said, well, let me go to the host, uh, you'll now see that this is correctly transitioned and now it's set to the host lower third. And the compositing is still here. So if I, if I came over and showed the full overlay, I could still turn on these other things. So these are really elements that are meant for the guest and not the host. So I have this ability now to dynamically change things inside of the mixes and use those mixes in a layered set as an overlay. And I'm just doing that. I'm just turning this overlay, these overlays on and off. And because I can dynamically turn on and off the layers, I can just keep this overlay up. I never have to take it off screen. So by sort of turning off the names now, I have the full overlay active, but there's nothing in it. And so I'm doing this overlay sort of as just layers on top of a transparent background. And that's all we have set up here. So the way we do the visibility is again, just from very simple button calls. So if I, uh, if I were to go in, there's just a, 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 a show layer on and off. So I can turn a layer on. So I pick the input, which is the complex overlay input, and I turn the layers on and off. So it's very, very simple to do. So the last piece in this is how are we doing everything with the guests when I switch to different guest inputs. And for that, I want to just jump over to the uh, other screen again. And I have this selection here. So all I'm doing is when I select a guest, I can come back and say, which row do I want to use for that guest? Uh, of my data set, because that's my data source manager. So we have all those rows set together. And so for each guest, I'm simply going there and saying, I start, uh, I pick the data source row selection. This is the actual table and uh, uh, the sheet that it's on. And then I say, which row do I want? And it's sort of zero base, zero, one, two, three. So I do that, and that's just an API function. And then I do another API function to do the to change the input on mix two. Because remember, mix two is the active guest mix. And we, we set that up. So if I switch back over to the vMix side, this active guest is set up. And if you remember, I the, the way I told it to change was through a cube view. So that is something that you could easily do. So if I sort of sit here and go and I change to the guest, and then I, I start to switch between them, 
you can see it's doing this little rotation. But because this is now a mix input and I place this into my overlay and scale it and do everything else I need to do it, when I'm in my two box, that little rotation works equally well. So you can see inside of this two box now, which is something you couldn't directly do if you were just working with layers, but because I'm working through a mix into that layer, I now can do interesting transitions with all of this and have that show up inside of a box. So it could be anything I wanted, you know, stingers, other things to do all that stuff. So you could sort of plug all that in and make this a more interesting way to do these types of transitions between guests. Uh, so, uh, you know, sort of pulling this, this back, if I actually jump and see if we can get a shot of the Stream Deck, you'll see the control mechanism that I'm really using for everything here. So I just have the top row where I select what guest I want. I have the second row here where I show what elements in my overlay I want to have on. I can turn on the names, that's the lower third for the people. I can turn on the city and I can turn on their social media contacts. And then at the bottom, I'm just saying, which shot do I want? Do I want the host, the guest or a two box? So for me, most of the time that I'm gonna be working with this, I can simply say, I'm talking with guest one. Okay, well, actually let's pick a new guest. So we'll pick guest three. So I'm talking with guest three and then along here, I can turn around and say, I want to talk to the guest full screen, uh, or I want to talk to the guest uh, in the two box, or I want to talk to the host. And so these things now for me is really just one button push. And if I have different elements on, so if I come here and say, I have the lower thirds and I go and switch to the guest, now with the one button push, all of that's being handled. It's saying, okay, I'm putting a new lower third for the guest in there now. And if I go to the two box, not only is it changing the names, but now I have the ability to change the layout. So you get this layout designed across these two separate boxes to adapt to the layout. So I think this will give you a better sense of some of the things that you can do when you're working with more demanding types of overlays in your productions. And you know the fact that you can just turn elements on and off, this is something that a lot of people would do. And you could do this through you know, hiding and showing layers inside the title template, but in a lot of ways, it's much more flexible to come back and say, I'm just breaking these up into separate elements and then stacking them and turning them on and off as layers inside a single stacked overlay. The other thing you get here, and this is something we touched on in the post show last week, is that you're now not really limited to four overlays anymore. So I'm just using overlay one here, and that's the only one that's on. And I have three distinct overlay elements that I'm turning on and off and combining. So something that would not be as easy to do if you try to do it directly using GT title, you know, with all the complexity that's baked into that. So th there are ways to do this that way, but I just think this model makes it much easier. And the reason I'm looking at this more seriously now is that in vMix 26, which is the vMix beta uh, that's available now, uh, you have a whole new set of mix inputs. Before it used to be mix one, two, three, and four, when mix one was the main one that's on your live production, and then you had three additional ones. Now you have your main one plus 15 additional ones. And I'll be honest, of all the features in vMix 26, I think this is going to be the most impactful for most people. So this will give you ways to do compositing now and these types of stacks with these types of transitions. Uh, I will give you a heads up. I had trouble getting the additional mixes to work exactly like expected. So uh, this is beta for them. So there are still are probably some elements here. I'm going to be posting those into the beta report on vMix. We just sort of saw some of this stuff this morning. But if you think about this now, I could do things where I make transitions for each of the individual elements that I'm passing through a mix. Because I can turn around and go from a blank transition 
into one of these others, take it, position it, scale it, and then I can do very cool dynamic transitions of individual elements on and off screen. And those additional mixes start to give you that ability now. It isn't sort of core to the way title works, the GT title designer works, but it is something you can start to add. And I think that's going to be very, very powerful. Also, it's going to let you integrate dynamic elements. So you could do like moving backgrounds under a lower third, put different names on top of that, and sort of combine those through a mix and just put those up and transition them on and off and do everything else you want. So again, some very, very cool potential graphic overlay possibilities using these mixes. And having that many of them means you can actually start to use them for a lot of these types of things. So some really cool stuff there. So let's see, I wanna catch up. And again, I apologize, we've had uh, so many, so many issues uh, with uh, the, the audio today coming into this. So let's see. Uh, <laughs> okay, so yes, yeah, so we have the, uh, we have multiple people warning us of uh, things not working and I definitely appreciate that. So please, if you, if you see something, get that. But uh, so we have uh, Dennis is saying, he's very happy to see that this also, ha also happens to us. So uh, Dennis, uh, thank you for sharing the love. We appreciate that. Uh, and we have Biz Shorty saying, Gremlins 3, the streaming anarchy coming this summer. <laughs> so yes, so absolutely uh this is this has been one of those one of those days for us so uh hopefully we'll have everything sorted out by next week uh and uh jawad is saying hello jawad good to see you here jawad is saying uh why is it audio that is a problem uh it because no matter how much we actually tend to focus on the video the audio has the most complicated processing signal chain in a lot of ways and it touches a lot of different things and it has its own signal path so all of these things combine to be problematic. So, so we have uh, Bill is saying, uh, let's see. So Bill is saying you could uh, make the overlay layer and title changes via triggers and shortcuts without code. And that, that is completely correct. So if we wanted to do this where I just, when I switched to a new set, I popped up certain elements and then faded them off the screen. All of that could be done through uh, triggers. And the thing with triggers is, in addition to having sort of the triggering event, like transition in, which would be one thing, you can turn around and say, how long do I wait before I start this? That's one of the delay parameters inside of a trigger. And in doing that, that means you could do where you say, I want to put this on after 250 milliseconds, but I want to take it off after 800 milliseconds. So they both could be triggering off of the same on transition in, but then using the delay, it lets me stack them in an order, which basically covers me for putting things on and putting them off all with one button push. So everything that we did here could all be done with that sort of simple automation. So that's a very good point, Bill. So let's see. So uh, ISTV is asking, is it possible to write delay as a function in scripting? Uh, the answer is yes. So we, we actually did this. I don't recall off the top of my head exactly what we had to do, but uh, basic scripting. So if you do things like we did here, where it's just a, uh, you know, where we just trigger an, a specific event to happen, you can actually do something which is there's sleep in, in inside the uh, sort of the start script and start dynamic script, which will let you go and you know, run scripts inside of a, uh, a shortcut. So in that, uh, let me actually just jump in here and see if I can go to one of them to, to show you. So if we go to the shortcuts here, uh, and inside of here, you can see I have these two things. So I could also do something here where I would do, I believe, I believe it will look just like, uh, So if I did something like this, what it will do is it will stop at this point, wait 1500 milliseconds and then go on to the next function. So if I stack these up and I want to do something where, you know, I went through a series of things, but separate it by time, you could just do a little sleep command in there and sort of jump in. And that should, that should make this 
simpler for some of these things. Lots of different ways to do this. I, I don't want to imply that this is sort of the only way. Uh, based on what you're doing, you can do you know some really cool things uh, through scripting, through uh, dynamic scripting, which is really just a collection of shortcuts, uh, as well as you know how you handle things in triggers, where you can you can set dynamic script and triggers and actually have the trigger be a big dynamic script. So you don't even have to have that set up directly as a shortcut. So interesting things on all of this for how you can how you can put these together. So we have uh, Gary Millwood saying very elegant. Yeah, I mean, I think once you start to look at the, the mixes now as a composited input and you can do all the things you could do with regular inputs, it becomes really powerful. And I would probably design some of these things differently. So if I wanted to do clever types of transitions inside of each one of these elements, like push them through a mix, what I would probably do is take and make them full size. So like my, everything I wanna do for my uh, shortcuts, sorry, not my shortcuts, my uh, social media overlays, everything for the location overlay. I probably make those sort of full screen and when I built a composite, I'd shrink them down. And because that composite is through a mix, I can now do a transition, which will just focus right on there. Exactly like what you saw when I did the cube roll for switching guests in the two box, because that was full size that I shrunk down. And you have that great dynamic ability now that you can add to specific elements on your screen. So some cool stuff you can do with that. So we have uh, Will Kinder. Will, pleasure having you here. He says, can you fade transition the lower thirds rather than doing a hard cut on? So, yes, you can. So the way with with any of these things, the way the way we have them set up is that I think for these lower thirds, they do a hard cut off for some reason. I'm still trying to get my arms around some of the things I want to do here. But if I were to put these here, I think I have these uh, these these may just be set as cuts. But yeah, so you can just change the shortcut that you're using. So if I come in here, let's go to where exactly where we're, the shortcuts we're using for this. Okay. Uh, so this is where I'm turning on the different uh, layers here. I set these up, uh, let's see. Okay, these, these are layer on off. So what I'm doing here is I just did these as I'm turning these as layers on or off. But when I set the, uh, the different elements down in the proper title, I could do those proper titles as transitions. And because I didn't have, basically I, I tried to do what you're describing, where I could have each of these individual elements do their own sort of fades and whatever. The issue I had with that was that vMix was getting confused. The vMix 26 beta, so let me be very clear, we're talking about beta software here. It was getting confused inside scripting when I tried to say which mix I wanted to apply different things to, where it, it got totally confused and was not, not even starting to work then with mix zero, which is you know the first mix, the, the main one you have here, and it was picking wrong things. So I ended up just going back to sort of an earlier version, which didn't have that in it. But if this thing was passed through and put into my lower third as a you know, in that complex overlay where I set them up at the stack. If I put that stack where my lower third stack was a mix also, it was a, it was a full mix, I could just turn around and say, I'm gonna feed that in and transition that to say whenever, whatever I go live within that, I can do fades, I can do cubes, I can do slide in, slide outs, all of that. So it will give you more ca capabilities visually, but the same model is gonna basically work. Right now, I'm just telling it to do do cuts because that works with the number of mixes I have, but you could easily do this where when you feed that mix in, you can do the transition and go between a basically a blank, a transparent input and the elements you want. Now you do, so you'd basically go there and say, do the element, the overlay that you want in preview, have the, the transparent transition in program and then you just turn around and say, do whatever transition I want on that. So that will give you exactly that fade in and fade out that you're looking for here. So it should work that way. So let's see. Uh, so Biz Shorty is saying, yeah, that the extra mix inputs are absolutely a huge bonus. 
totally there's so many different use cases for them and now that you don't have to be parsimonious about using them uh you have the ability now to use them for things that you know you probably would have saved for other types of compositing functions but now with with 15 you pretty much can use them for a lot of these complex types of things so jp is asking can you explain how to insert the primary presenter into the box without it modifying the primary input we keep getting uh spillover uh sure so here's the so there's, there's two ways and one of them I, I i think i may have a sense of what you're doing here so if if i were to go in and let's look at the two box the way i have it set up so for this two box i basically let's go to layers i really have uh a couple of things first in my background uh sort of the 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 general thing it's just a a two box it's just a video so if, if i sort of look at this the actually let me let me do it this way because i can sort of show it i'll just hide these so what i have going behind this is just a video so that's the input itself is just this video playing and then i've added these two layers so layer 12 is the host and that that host when i have that set up what i've actually done is i've taken and i've crop this to fit exactly where I want it on the screen. So I scaled it down and you can see this is not exact. I, this is a visual thing we did here. I scaled it down so that it sort of fits between the two hard lines in the video that's playing in the background. And I then cropped it so that I'm not actually trying to fit it behind some sort of template on top. I'm actually doing this where it is cropped into the space and then I just put a radius border around it. So you get that black, which blends with the black sort of in the background. So we just did that where this is set up with crops on both sides and the same thing for the active guest where I cropped them, gave them a little wider space because I wanted them to be sort of full of screen over here. But that gave me the exact look I wanted with the same sort of thickness with the border and everything else but it's a hard crop so there is no spillover possibility you've blocked it into exactly where you want it so hopefully that is answering the question you're asking but that's exactly how we did it just the background layer which has the animation the two overlays on that and the borders uh, for edges and then we just cropped and scaled it to make sure they all fit in exactly how we wanted to see them on screen. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so I think that's all the questions we have here. So given all the all the, the difficulties we had on the show, uh, why don't we just wrap this up? We'll go into the post show and uh, hopefully if there are any other questions, we can cover that there or questions on anything else that uh, you want to talk about related to streaming and video so if you can't join us thank you very much for joining us today really appreciate the time you took and uh we will be seeing you next week if you can hang around we'll see you in a few seconds take care everyone all right Welcome back, everybody. So uh, you, you go away from the studio for a couple of weeks, and this is what you end up with. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, we have John. John, John Drinkwater, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you joining us. Uh, so American Newscape, uh, thank you for watching. And, uh, you know, I, I, again, I apologize for the, uh, the audio dropouts and whatever. Hopefully, you know, we were able to sort of keep enough continuity that uh, the overall explanation for things makes sense. So we have automation for vMix saying goodbye. So thank you for joining us, automation. Definitely appreciate it. So uh, this was this show sort of came from a question that somebody asked a couple of weeks ago, where can I have more than four overlays uh, and you know, the, the immediate thing that came into my head was, yeah, let's, uh, 
you could do that by, by just doing layers and using that for an overlay. But as I started to think through that, then I started to think about doing things where I could put those through a mix and then be able to work with that mix as sort of a composited element and change things in the mix. And so that's where we sort of came to today's show. But it was really coming out of that core question of can you do multiple inputs uh, inside of a uh, for for overlay beyond the four that they have. So so <laughs> so Bill Mew is saying he hopes he didn't jinx us. No, I I, I don't think I don't think that was that was the jinx. Uh, we we if you notice we were late getting started. So we we were sort of on that edge of yeah I think we're good but then something else went out out again. So you you're always uh, it's always something. So uh, so uh, apologies that we didn't have a, a good plan B in place, but we did have the uh, the mic here. So I know it must be a little noisy, but uh, all should be good with that. But I think, you know, when we when I looked at what to do this week, I was, I was sort of torn between two possible shows. One of them was looking what's new in vMix 26. And the other was this show, which I had been sort of thinking about what we wanted to do. And... Uh, when I looked at vMix 26, I just felt it would be hard to demo a lot of the things, uh, you know, and from there, then have something that we could, uh, you know, we could definitely sort of make into a, a visually interesting show. A lot of the stuff is sort of under the covers, but the one element that jumped out was the mixes, and that's sort of how we sort of combine the two. A little bit of vMix 26 on the mixes, the new beta, uh, and you know, and then what we were looking to do. So that's how we came up with this. So, so let's see. Uh, so J, uh, JP is asking, uh, can you talk about your pre-show video in a way that allows guests to still talk to each other before going live? Okay, I'm gonna try to make sure I understand exactly what you're looking for, JP. So when we start, uh, everybody can still post comments. Once, once we go live, that sort of, that pre-show piece is live where it just says the countdown. Uh, everybody can post comments and interact. Uh, for anybody that's sort of calling in to live to air, so if we had guests that were sort of queued up pre-show, they can all talk to each other. We have an off-air and an on-air mode for that. So those guests can talk, you know, actual talk talk as opposed to, to post talk. Uh, I'm not sure I'm answering your question, though, because it seems like you're, there's something more here. So if I haven't gotten it, just sort of repackage it for me so I, I make sure I can uh, talk, to, to, talk to specifically what you're looking for there. So let's see. So we also have Aziz is asking... Uh, do you want to do uh, a demonstrate the beta version of vMix? So I, I won't do this in the after show. So let me sort of start out. There's, there's a lot of stuff that in order to do this, you need to set up things in advance. So it's, it's not something you can just sort of wing as a, as a demo. The mixes, which I showed here, are interesting. And I, I'm, I'm happy to sort of show that. So if I, if I go here and say, I want to add an input, so let me switch over here. You can now see uh, when I have these mixes here, I can keep adding them, and this this mix here is is you know mix four, but I could just sort of go up and add additional mixes from that, uh, and so you can see now these mixes just keep keep going. So these are we already have more than you could do in the past. Uh, the other element in the mixes that we have is you can right click and say, I want to show the output only. So one of the things that you get, so if you sort of look up and let me see if we have uh, something here where I have. Yeah, so let's look at the active guest since this is a mix. If I turn off the show output, this is the way you used to see uh, these things on uh so if, if I come here and look, I have this little, this is my preview and this is my program out for this mix. So if I were to take this now uh, and 
you know, I do cuts or anything, you can see that's switching there. But sometimes when you're looking at this as an input, that can be really hard to see. Uh, so what this lets you do now is say you can show the output only. We're saying whichever is the live one, use that. And then you can also go and just select the input that you want. And you can see now, you know, I have these extra mixes here that I can also put in there. But this just lets me go and pick whichever guest I want that way. So it's an easier way to work with mixes and a lot more of them. So now this looks like a regular input, which is what I would, would really expect because I'm just using this to, to position guests. So when I'm switching guests in here now, uh, you can see that's just taking place in there and it looks like a normal input to me. But that's really the biggest advantage with the mix side. There are a lot of other smaller things in here, uh, things dealing with SRT uh, that you know are, are around audio channels and the like. So there are other things I really haven't had enough time to play with, but this is the stuff that I actually did use. Uh, a couple of bugs in there that stopped me from doing it full on the way I wanted to, but it will be something that we will cover in the future. I just need to figure out a good way to sort of package it as a show. And hopefully we'll get to that fast. So let's see. So JP is saying, okay, now I understand what, so, so JP, so if, if you're using, if you just have guests coming into another, like live to air does that for you sort of as uh, the, the, the ability to talk in the background. The way you would handle this if you were doing something else, if these guests were coming, you know, from, you know, either like vMix call or, or other things, what you would have to do is you'd have to take and create one of the, let me slide this over, maybe see if I can pull this out. If you see over here, you have these different buses that are available to you. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to dynamically switch what audio was going back to the guest. And, you know, if you had the guest audio coming in uh, and you wanted them to hear each other but not go live on air, you would have to do something where you switch buses. So you weren't routing their audio live on air. You would just route into something where they could talk to somebody in the studio. So this would really be, you know, the, the way you'd need to do that as a, uh, you know, as a back-end audio process for the guests. But, uh, you know, I know vMix Call does that when they're live, you know, that you just get the guests hearing each other. But in that process, you'd have to shunt their audio so it's not going out live pre-show. So that would be the, the most direct way. Things like live to air where you, you know, we have on air and off air and other modes. So when the guests are off air, they're not going out. They can hear, hear and talk with each other. They can talk to the studio. But then when you put them on air, their video and audio go out as live feeds and they can then be sort of live in the production and hear each other. So different ways to do that. But I think that's the, uh, that's probably the most straightforward way right now. So, so let's see. Uh, so automation for vMix is saying also full name uh, on layer positions. Yeah, there, there's a few things. I mean, there are places inside of vMix 26 where you can actually pick one of the mixes. Like, what do I, what do I want to see here? And it just says mix one, two, three, four, five. So it'd be nice if I changed the name of it inside the input, if I could come back and show me that name as well as the mix. So I'll know it's a mix I'm looking at but it, it, it still keeps a name so I can remember what I had in that mix. So some, some good things on that. But yeah, inside of, you know, inside of the layers right now, you have to depend on, you know, when you set them up, you have to depend on whatever name you gave to the inputs. And when you have these mixes, that could be, again, you have to specifically name these as, you know, mix inputs to know that you're actually looking at a mix and not a direct input. Uh, so, so let's see. So Aziz is uh, saying, did the beta version ever crash? Uh, I'll say it hasn't crashed, but it got into a state for us where it, it wasn't usable in a production. So didn't bring down the system, but basic things like cuts and fades did not 
pick up the correct things. So, and I think that had to do with me stressing out the mixes. It got confused. Now, I was doing this with automation. There were other things in there. So there could be something where in your case, it would be fine. But uh, for what I was doing, where I was doing API calls to change and control these new mixes, that seemed to cause some issues. So probably that was what was causing the most issues for us. It may be different. So Aziz is saying he would uh, love to see features, uh, you know, a show on the new features of the beta. So we'll, we'll look and see what we can do to put that together. Uh, and uh, Hakan uh, Foss also mentioned that uh, Tom Sinclair did that on streaming. So, so yeah, I mean, Tom, Tom and I communicate fairly regularly. Uh, I knew that Tom was going to do that, so I felt I felt less compelled to do that. I certainly, you know, don't just want to do a Me Too show. So I want to make sure that, you know, whatever we do on the show adds some unique value and covers things either in a in a different way or a more focused way for specific use cases. So, you know, but yeah, uh, I think anybody that would like to see that sort of immediate what what's in vmix 26 definitely take a look at uh tom sinclair show over at streaming idiots so uh, it's a great program and he has a lot of great uh guests on as well sort of talking from real world experience about their use of the products so 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 bishorty said that uh he downloaded live to air months back but didn't get a chance to play with it uh so uh if you uh if you want biz, just uh, reach out to us. Uh, you know, go to support at neural dot com, uh, and you know we can get uh, you a another uh, another free trial to to give it a chat and see if it see if it could work for you. But we think there's a lot of things in there, and uh, we're actually going to be doing a show later this year. So we're running out of year, which is scary to me. <laughs> uh, but so we're going to be doing a show later this year that will look at all the new stuff that we've put in live hair since the last time we covered it. And there are a lot of cool things and uh, a small teaser. There's going to be a new product announcement before the end of the year. And I'll just leave it at that and leave, leave you hanging as to what it will be. But uh, so we, we have that as well that we'll be covering at a show later this year, but uh, biz just, just reach out support at neural.com and somebody will get you set up with uh another trial so all right so hopefully we've covered everything uh i think we have all the questions and so i wanted to say thank you to everybody uh i definitely appreciate you joining us for the show every week uh and it's great to see people keep coming back that that really gives us a feel of a community here oh we have another question so uh if I'm using three monitors and want to put different inputs on different monitors without NDI, is that possible? Uh, quick answer is yes. Uh, you can do it through the full screen. So actually, I mean, I'm not gonna do this here, but if I go back to here, you can see the way I have this set up, I have it set up with a single display for the full screen. So I could actually put individual outputs on this or inputs rather on this as, as an output that's just an HDMI out. Uh, inside of the way you can, can set all this, so when I turn this on and off, it will you know take whatever screen you've designed this, uh, described as your full screen and, and push that out there. I don't have a second screen set up on the beta yet, but you could do that and sort of pick what you wanted to go on both screens. So you can do things like multi-view on one screen and then the program out on another, but you could also use that for two distinct inputs if you wanted to do that. Uh, the other thing is because you can pick an input, you could do something with layers. So if you wanted to create your own sort of multi-view and use that as a full screen, you could build a, an input with layers, set that up and set that so you see that as an output. So different ways to do that. So. Uh, so let's see. So we have Bishorty saying, uh, oh, see ya. Oh, sorry. That was to, to JP. Sorry about that. So, uh, John Drinkware is saying, can he suggest a new segment, uh, 
can we share your setup and get guests to share their setups? I'm sure we all do things differently. Uh, and that could, yeah, that could definitely lead to uh, some interesting uh, feedback from different people. So I don't have the full message here, but I, I get exactly what you're saying. Let me think about that. That is, that is something that could be very cool to do. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, so ISTV Live, it's a great show. Thank you for that. Uh, definitely appreciate it. Uh, so John Drinkwater is also asking, if we install 26, can it be downgraded for live work? Uh, I believe it can. I haven't done that yet on this system. So uh, that's definitely a... Uh, you know, your mileage may vary. I, I don't want to recommend that and destroy somebody's live production system. As far as I know, you can't have both of them installed at the same time. So I can't have like a beta uh, directory. And was, but I might. There may be some way to, to figure that out. Uh, but it would have to be something where we, you really segmented the two. Uh, and I'd have to see if that's possible. But uh, hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully you can, you know, because that would be something where if this became unusable here, I put it here in the studio, but if I had difficulties with using this for doing like product demos and other stuff we do here, that would definitely be something that I'd want to do. So I'd like to be able to do that without having to reinstall the system. Uh, I don't think so. Typically vMix is pretty clean about, you know, flushing out if you uninstall it. So I think that shouldn't be a problem, but uh, all should be good. Uh, We'll see. We'll see when I'm going to try it at some point. So I'll let you know. So. So, yeah. So, Aziz, I believe uh, now I, ha I haven't done all the setup for this. So uh, give me one second. I can look at Aziz asking about. Uh, yeah. So the way I have this set up here uh, in full screen, you have two full screens that you can do. Uh, and you can set them up for, for different uh, inputs. And I have two of them. I just, I haven't, like I said, I haven't worked a lot with 26. We put this on yesterday. Uh, so I don't know, but you should have, you would, would normally have two outputs and describe which monitors you want them on. And uh, that should get you, you know, where you want to go with this. But uh, you do have, it is baked into vMix itself. So you should have those, those two outputs. Just go over to output and you'll see the two, uh, the two full screen uh, settings. If you have, I think it's 4K Pro and Max, which is basically Pro for a month. So that can give you that. So, all right. So uh, Battle for Freedom. Uh, so thank you, for, thank you for joining us. Always good to have you here. Uh, so uh, so I see that uh, JP is left. So JP, thank you. appreciate you joining us if you're still here. And uh, Aziz, thank you. Uh, the other thing, John, I'm definitely going to give that a thought about you know creating a new segment because that, that could be something interesting if we could figure out a way to, to roll that in. That may be something that we do for our next season and you know as we sort to repackage this over the first few months of uh, 2000. Oh, my God, 2023. That is scary just saying it. But uh, uh, that could be something we could we could look at doing, whether we do it in, you know, certain shows or whether we do it as a segment in each show. So, but very good suggestion. So thank you. All right, everyone. I guess we're going to call it a wrap. I appreciate you hanging with us for all of this, for hanging around for the post show, and for being part of the community. Thanks, and we'll see you all next week. Have a good, safe week. Take care, everyone.